Hello, welcome to Mike's Pets Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Pichota. Happy Tuesday to you. And uh, we are recording today. Uh, today we are going to be the All Star game uh, later tonight. Um, and so, because of that, we are officially at the halfway point this season. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk about the Mets, um, give the Mets their midseason grades this year. And. Uh, go over what I think are some of the things um, to talk about the team, some of the things that I think have been successes, other things that have been dismal failures. And uh, we're going to go by this um, position by position. So starting at catcher, um, Francis- Francisco Alvarez, and um, I'm going to grade this out, um, giving a grade of from F to A+. Plus. And for Alvarez, I'm going to give him a, uh, a grade of a B because um, Alvarez has been one of the uh, few, few pleasant surprises this year for the Mets um, for what has been a you know, tough year. Um, we've talked several times about how the Mets have not really uh, played up to par. The same cannot be said for Alvarez, who's been terrific um, this year. Um, he has... Uh, put on stretches where he's just looked like an amazing um, home run hitter. And we just had the home run derby last night, and unfortunately Pete Alonso was not able to get past the first round. That's probably going to be Pete's uh, last go-around, we assume, at the home run derby. Um, but um, uh, watching Alonzo, I was thinking about how it might be something to watch um, Alvarez eventually participate in that event. Um, because he definitely has the home run hitting ability. Um, I think he has a certain amount of showmanship. And uh, I talked about this last time. Um, th- there's something that just makes Alvarez, a, a, has, he has that star quality. And it's really something to watch him um, play. Uh, and I would love to see him um, being put on more of a national stage. Because they've talked about you know, players like... Julio Rodriguez and uh, last night um, Luis Robert Jr., um, who have been stars in the league um, or, or rising stars in the league, and they haven't really had like that national showcase to sort of um, show off what makes them so special. And I would like Alvarez to get that um, same uh, sort of inclusion in that sort of uh, elite talent. Um, and I think it's very soon that's going to be the case. I think I. I see multiple all-star opportunities in his future and uh, potentially home run derby events. Um, so Alvarez has been excellent this year. I mean, you look at his stat line. It's been really something to watch. He has uh, 17 home runs on the year, 35 RBIs, um, which is pretty shocking. I mean, to have only 35 RBIs and 17 home runs. I mean, that just kind of shows that. Um, he's getting on base and offering homering with nobody on base. Um, and that's not really an indictment on him so much as the rest of the Mets lineup. Um, the fact that they can't really seem to get on base enough for him. Um, and he is frequently batting in the, uh, in the lower uh, portion of the Mets lineup. So um, it's just been the way that Showalter has structured his lineup this year. Uh, we've seen frequently Showalter um, starting Alvarez uh, in the... Uh, in the, in the lower part, maybe usually somewhere between like between uh, six and ninth in the lineup. So uh, his batting line is um, fine. Really, you look at it; it's a uh, two thirty eight batting average, which is no one's expecting Alvarez to hit three hundred. It's a little lower than I think people were like hoping for from him. I think he could definitely be a two fifty hitter um, at the in, at the major league level. Um, the on base percentage is pretty low um, under 300 he's at 295 right now and uh, that's just given the fact that he doesn't really walk that much Um, he has 13 walks on the year against 58 strikeouts Um, he's done this in 66 games played so factoring in um, you know potential um, you know days off because he is a catcher you can assume this guy is probably not going to walk more than maybe 30 times this year and that's pretty low for a guy who doesn't really hit for a great batting average as it is so um, he knows his his speed, which is he's there to hit for home runs. And you see that in his slugging percentage. He's been, he has a 514 slugging percentage this year. Um, he's been excellent. And uh, I, I, I'm talking at length about Alvarez probably more than I will at, at others, other positions because he's just been so positive for the Mets this year. Um, and 
Um, we're talking about his offensive contributions. It's also his defensive contributions. He has a great arm behind home play. I think he has um, the respect of his, the, the pitching staff. I think they understand him. I think he's good. He's improving as a pitch framer. I think he's improving um, defensively behind the play. There are still some, t- some days where he has those um, sort of lapses in his uh, defensive ability, but I think with time, I think he will continue to improve, and I think he will be a very good two-way player. Um, so Alvarez gets a B. Um, next up, Pete Alonso at first base. And Alonso, it's been an interesting year. Um, he's in what could be construed as probably his biggest slump of the season, um, and it's seen his batting average really tank. Um, he's down to batting 211. But, of course, Pete's there to hit home runs and drive in for RBIs, and that's what he does. And that's he has a 20, he has 26 home runs on the year, 61 RBIs. Um, those numbers well in line with what we expect Alonzo to put, put up by the end of the year, which is he should, again, be a 40 home run threat. I think he will be among the league leaders in RBIs, as well as, um, I think, improving uh, that batting average as the... Um, year goes by because um, he, he is in an unusually bad um, slump right now. So I, I think he can raise that batting average up higher. Um, it, it is it is sort of affecting his overall batting line. Um, you see his on base percentage really low right now, three ten. And uh, this is a year um, removed from his twenty twenty two, where he was, I mean, outstanding across the board. Um, he batted two seventy one on the year, um, had uh, three fifty two on base percentage. It was a really great job by Alonzo last year, and um, he just hasn't really gotten into that same groove. Um, You can say he's been a little bit pull happy. I think he just hasn't been um, working uh, quite as much towards uh, the uh, right to right center with the way it is batting approach, and I think that is affecting him. Um, But um, if I was going to grade Alonzo on the year, I would say I'd give him B plus. Um, B plus is definitely, I think. Uh, representative of his year, which has been full successes, but also some failures, and there's definitely room to improve. I think he can get better all around as the year goes by. Uh, next up, Jeff McNeil, um, and McNeil has been uh, probably one of the most disappointing cases of the year, um, and one year removed from winning a batting title, he's now batting 253 on the season with three home runs, 26 RBIs. Um, he has a 659 OPS. Uh, across the board has been just a dismal failure, and um, he's not hitting for really any kind of contribution. Um, if I was going to grade McNeil, I was going to grade him with a uh, C, which feels um, somewhat generous sometimes because McNeil's just been... Um, th- there, there are these stretches with McNeil where I, I do feel like he's a little bit too governed by his emotions. Um, he has these real stretches where I think he just really gets in his head and he's con the, the constant, you know, uh, slamming of the helmet, just furious on himself all the time. And, you know, you can be upset at yourself, but you also need to do something to improve in your way. And he just is, I think too locked into himself right now. And this is kind of what was going on with him in 2021 where everybody was like, what's going on with McNeil? Like he, he was so upset with himself all the time. Um, because he knew he was not playing up to his abilities. And um, in, you saw him in 2022, much more even keel because he was having a lot more success. And um, he just has to, I think, restrain himself in these moments where he, I think he is too passionate at, at, at times, um, and it really does get, get on him. And uh, when he's not hitting, he's just a whirlwind of negative emotions, and that's not really um, conducive to the Mets right now, to the point that McNeil, I, there have been several times where I've been like, McNeil probably needs to be benched um, for a significant amount of time, but they don't really have a better option than McNeil. Um, so as it, as it stands now, he is a C grade. Um, along with Alonzo, I think there's definitely room for improvement. I think he can get better as the year goes by, but um, it's just been a pretty disappointing season for McNeil. Next up, Francisco Lindor. And Lindor in the middle of a torrid and I mean torrid hot stretch right now. He is absolutely fantastic um, at the plate. And uh, we've seen Lindor have like great stretches at the plate. I don't think I've ever seen him this in this in this stretch where he's just a hit machine where he's constantly um, roping base hits. And I was looking at his batting log earlier today, and I was just struck by the fact that all the, all the multi-hit games he's had recently. Um, and 
uh, unfortunately, his bat went cold the last two games of that um, San Diego series. And uh, you can probably chalk that up to the uh, Mets offense going cold those two games as well. Um, but, uh, you know, had the 5-for-5 five five game um, in Arizona the, um, four nights ago. And then uh, the, game, the first game in San Diego came up 3-for-5 for, for that game also. Homer in both those games. I mean, he's had an amazing stretch. And uh, his numbers for uh, July and, you know, July, very, very short month. Um, as it is, I mean, they're outstanding. I mean, if you look at his, his numbers for um, this month, he has three home runs, six RBIs. He's paying 375. He has a 1,200 OPS. So, uh, spectacular numbers. And um, overall in the year, he's played great, like two way ball. I mean, that's what you usually expect from Lindor is that he's just a very slick and. Um, strong uh defensive defensive player but um that's just what you're going to get with Lindor and he's hitting at a rate of home runs that I haven't really seen from Lindor since he's arrived um he has 19 on the year he had 26 all last year which was a pretty good sign from Lindor that his power had kind of returned 19 at the all-star break means a fairly good bet that he's going to hit 30 by the end of the year um he has 60 RBIs uh this is I mean, really spectacular power numbers that we haven't really seen from Lindor, as I said. Um, I mean, he—I mean, he was really great last year, but um, on an unbelievable kick right now, and uh, he's doing this with Lindor's never really walked like a ton. Um, he's a guy he's going to hit like around 260, 270 a se- every season. Um, he's batting about 240 right now, and um, that's mostly due to, sh- due to the. Um, hot stretch that he's on right now um, because he was betting around 200 210 for most of the season but i've been happy from what i've seen from lindor i think he has um been one of the um important players in in the middle of that mets lineup Um, and when he's been going hot um the mets have been going hot i think that's been pretty clear with uh their success recently in the month of july um lindor was feeling it and the Mets offense was feeling it as well so um, as Lindor goes the Mets go and um, I'm going to grade Lindor I'm going to grade him on a a, uh, B grade actually I'm going to amend that I'm going to make it a B plus um, because I I look at the 19 home runs he's been really very 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 strong for the Mets um, and in particular has had a a great effect on them this year Um, next up Brett Beatty And Brett Beatty, uh, tough to say what exactly is the situation with Beatty right now. Um, he's he, so let's look at his stats right now. He has five home runs on the year, twenty one RBIs. Uh, he's batting two forty four. He has a six sixty nine OPS. These are numbers that don't really scream. Um, Pro ball material. I mean, not, not pro ball. I mean, major league material. Um, and it's been one of those hard to identify things with Beatty because he's had such incredible success in the minor leagues. Um, his approach just really changed when he got to the majors, and you can kind of chalk this up to maybe um, the MLB coaches, maybe Eric Chavez, um, uh, kind of getting in his head about how he should um, approach it, but. I just look at the way he's um, his launch angle has really diminished. Um, he's really just hitting the ball very level, and because of that, all of his power is gone. Um, and the result of it all is that he's hitting the ball extremely hard, but on the ground, and it's always a ground ball that he's driving the ball like 100 miles an hour off the bat, but he's just consistently driving into the ground. It's resulted in a lot of ground outs, a lot of pop flies when he gets under them. And uh, it's not an approach that's really conducive. Um, defensively, I think he's gotten a lot better than he is last year, um, which is one of the, uh, I think, Im- improvements on his overall game. But he has not played um, at the rate that most people were anticipating. Uh, definitely not to Francisco Alvarez's standard. Um, and most people think Beatty can be just as good as Alvarez um, if he continues to get more reps at third base and gets more consistent and gets consistent playing time out there, which he has gotten. Um, but it's just been a, a tough stretch for Beatty, and uh, I'm going to put Beatty's grade on the year at a, a C-. minus. 
Uh, next up, Tommy Pham has been one of the um, pleasant surprises of the year um, for the Mets when they acquired him. No one really had any real like expectations on Pham, um, who was a you know solid veteran, um, thirty five years old. You know, most most people expect Pham to be, you know, the solid veteran fourth outfielder. You know, uh, who was you know going to get his playing time in, but wasn't going to do for much for them. Um, there have been stretches where Tommy Pham has been the most important player in that lineup, the only guy who was hitting at times, and um, has now become a must start. Um, Pham has gotten the majority of the playing time recently. Over Marcana, more on him later, and um, it's resulted in the Mets having a much more um, uh, uh, an overall much more solid lineup for the, on the year. And I'll, I'll just read off his numbers. He has nine home runs in the year, thirty-four RBIs, um, has stolen ten bases, uh, which has been pleasant uh, to see. I, I was not expecting Fam to be a guy who could potentially go like twenty twenty in a full season at the, at his age, but. He has, he has a chance to make it. Um, he's batting 277. He has an 836 OPS. Great numbers across the board. Um, he's been very good for them and uh, a, a surprising pickup. Um, there's going to be some questions as to how long the Mets are going to stick with Pham. He They may trade him um, before the trade deadline. We'll see how that, uh, what their overall feeling is on the on the club, if they feel like they uh, need to, you know, uh, part with the veterans, and uh, they're going to be teams that are really looking at Fam as potentially a nice um, midseason pickup, if the Mets do decide to trade him. But um, he's overall been very good for the Mets, and I'm going to grade him with a B grade. Next up, Brandon Nimmo. Nimmo flashing a um, Nimmo's uh, flashing a lot of power recently. Um, he's up to 13 home runs on the year, 44, 41 RBIs. Um, he's based on balls. We always knew that he was going to get on base and he draws his great amount of walks at the top of the lineup, 46 on the year. Um, he is batting 266 with an 807 OPS. Uh, he has been one of the Mets, um, you know, very pleasant, um, moves. Uh, everything's kind of worked out with Nemo. He's been just very solid across the board. And, um, he, 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 he have to aid incredibly hot stretch he's sort of plateaued um recently but um that hasn't stopped him from uh as i said before exhibiting a lot of power um he had 16 home runs all of last season here he has 13 um at mid-season right now so uh much more um comprehensive um, overall power, power hitting from Nemo. I think he could finish the year potentially with 20 home runs. Does not steal a lot of bases, which is um, always surprising considering his speed, but he's just not a guy who's going to steal his bases. And um, it's been a uh, overall, probably the most um, solid in terms of overall ability. I'm going to grade Nemo with a B grade for him as well. Uh, Starling Marte. He's going to get a, a D from me right off the board because Marte has been probably the most disappointing player on the Mets. He has a negative war. Uh, there's really no, no way to kind of describe what exactly happened with Dem, with Marte, who, uh, as I said, I've said before, seemingly aged like 10 years in the course of one offseason. Um, there's it's really difficult to describe how defensively he has gotten so much worse in just one season and it's because he's not really playing um fully healthy i think it's pretty clear on that um, Marte father time hit him like a ton of bricks and because of that um he's having a lot of difficulty sort of staying on the field and when he is playing on the field um he's having uh problems playing to his full ability i think that's pretty clear with him uh Marte you know, reading off the stats here, five home runs, 20 RBIs. His one thing that gives him a positive, um, a positive for the year. And this is probably what keeps him from getting like an F on this season is, um, he has 23 stolen bases, which, which, which puts him among the major league leaders. And, uh, there's a good chance that he'll finish with maybe 40 stolen bases. If he stays healthy in the year, um, there's a good case to be made that Marte should probably be benched at this point. Um, and that they should uh, probably focus on getting a, another right fielder in his place because for a two-time Gold Glover, his def- his defense has gotten so bad that you really can't even have him out there. He has no range anymore. Um, it seems it seems like Nemo's uh, having to go more and more into right center, 
um, whereas Marte used to be able to kind of track down really anything in right field. Um, it's resulted in much more now the he they have to um, it's it, it's remarkable how quickly that's become. Nimmo is now the um, primary defensive um, outfielder out there rather than Marte, the two-time Gold Glover. Um, and I don't really know. It's not like Alonzo and uh, McNeil, who are much younger. Marte, I don't really know if he can um, possibly improve as the year goes by because, you know, as he as the year goes by, he continues to get older and older. And, and um, can he actually um, step it up in the second half? I don't really think so. Um, so you're going to be left with this idea of what's going to ha- exactly happen with him. Uh, Daniel Vogelback at DH, he's going to get um, a D as well from me. Um, Vogelback's been very, very disappointing. And certainly the amount of playing time that uh, the Mets have given him, um, he's seen 63 games played. He has five home runs and 26 RBIs to show for it. I mean, it's really pathetic um, numbers. And Vogelback's gotten on it much more much more recently. He's been um, flashing a little bit more power. But to have only five home runs at the midseason um, when the Mets were expecting him to be the primary DH, uh, very, very, very discouraging. He's back to 225, a 690 OPS. I mean, these are numbers that really just uh, you, can't, you can't expect somebody to be starting as much as he is. And... Uh, playing this poorly, and uh, I would prefer that um, they maybe um, find a better option. However, I, I honestly don't know if they have a better option that they can bring in, uh, potentially. Uh, the last um, position player I'm going to grade is going to be Mark Hanna. And Canna, I'm going to give Canna, because I, I do like Canna. I think he does a lot of things well um he hasn't really played up to his abilities but that's more of the fact that he just doesn't somewhat limited in his overall abilities i think really more than anything um so i'm gonna grade canna um with a c um even though his numbers are not great i mean six home runs 28 rbis um 245 batting average he still has a 748 ops it's just because he gets on base a lot 28 walks in a limited playing time um, that he has had um, he just has a good approach and just, just gets on base. And um, when he is playing, he does come up offensively for this team. So um, I've enjoyed what I've seen from Canna for the most part. I don't think he is also, like Vogelback, a full-time starter and a uh, guy who you probably wouldn't put in as DH, but they just don't really have a lot better options at this point. And a lot of guys not playing up to their abilities. It's been pretty discouraging to see. Thank you for listening to the Mike Spence Podcast. Please be sure to follow us on Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Finally, please also follow the podcast Twitter, which is Mike Spence Pod, all one word. Appreciate your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day or evening. Let's go, Mets.